Hey everyone, welcome to Small Batch Devs. My name is Austin. And I'm Elliot. Uh, if you're new here or if you've been following along, we have been building a blog application using Angular. Um, and this will be another episode in that series. Yeah, today we're going to be integrating a WYSIWYG HTML editor. And WYSIWYG just stands for what you see is what you get. Yes, and the WYSIWYG we will be using is TinyMCE, which we'll provide a link for down the, in the description. Um, but there are many other HTML editors that you can choose out on the interwebs, so you can just look them up. So what is a WYSIWYG HTML editor? Well, it's a feature-rich text editor that allows you to add styled text, images, code snippets, and much more to the content that you write. Right, and in the background, what this is doing is generating HTML for you and then applying some CSS to it so that when you inject it into your web page, it actually looks pretty nice. But be careful anytime you use any HTML injection on your website as this opens the possibility for people to inject their own script tags with malicious code that will run on your client. The first thing we're gonna do is add a new enumeration file. Uh, we're just going to add an author's enum so that we can uh, say who uh, wrote which blog post. Uh, after that, we're going to update our blog post model so that it reflects a few new fields we came up with and that we're gonna add in here. And after that, we are going to update the homepage and the view screens so that they reflect these model updates. So some pretty easy stuff, but just a little bit of cleanup. Cue the music. Cue the music, please. please. Okay, so that was really quick. Uh, I'm just gonna go over what we, what we coded. So in the blog post, we added several new properties as well as changed the name for a few existing ones. So we got rid of the title property, we changed it to a header, and we added the subheader and the pretty HTML properties. Uh, what the pretty HTML property is gonna do is allow us to have, well, pretty URLs. Uh, these are gonna act as the UIDs for our blog posts. So instead of generating a random string of characters and numbers, we're gonna use these pretty URLs that we come up with ourselves. And then we'll just reference the blog posts in Firebase by these URLs because they'll be the IDs of those blog posts. So the pretty URLs will need to be unique, but it'll look much better in the end. Uh, we also added a author field so that we can keep track of who wrote which blog posts. And we added a preview image source field. And what this will do is allow us to put in the uh, image location to show a little preview on the home page and kind of attract users to that blog post a little bit more. The other things we updated in this section are the home page component as well as the view page component and we just updated those to reflect the model changes that we just made in the blog post model uh, but specifically in the view post html we added this inner html property and what this does is that tiny mce is going to output its text that we write in html with the css inlined and so we're just going to inject all of that right into this inner HTML tag. But be careful because this is the security warning that we were telling you about in the intro of this video. Now it's time to go ahead and integrate TinyMCE into our application. So over here on the left-hand side, you can see we have some documentation provided by TinyMCE for integrating, the app, uh, integrating TinyMCE into an Angular 4 plus integration application. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so if we scroll down a little bit here, the first few steps we've pretty much already done and we don't need to do. We already have our Angular application up and running. So we'll start on step four and we'll just go ahead and install TinyMCE Angular. So npm install dash dash save at TinyMCE forward slash TinyMCE dash Angular. We'll give that a second to install. The next step, we're gonna just jump ahead a little bit and run our other npm install um, command down here. And that is npm install dash dash save 
tiny MCE. So once these are done, we will go ahead and jump into the code of actually integrating tiny MCE into our blog application. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Don't forget, use it the music. Okay, so we finally have everything working in our blog application. It took a minute, um, yeah. but we, we're, we're there. <laughs> we got um, it. So the first thing we had to do is add the editor module and this constant to our uh, providers. We have the, uh, well, actually the imports. We have the editor module in our imports here, and then in our provider, we added this. And of course, we imported some stuff up top, as you can see here. And then we jumped into our angular.json file. Open that up. So in our angular.json here in our architect build uh, assets, we added these objects here. This is the glob pattern uh, for the tiny MCE node modules files. Right. So whenever you build, Angular is going to look in the input and it's going to grab all those files and move them into an output folder. And uh, you'll see us use this in the editor HTML file. And we also are pointing to the tiny MCE minified JavaScript file here in our scripts. Um, so that's all that we end added to our angular.json. We'll just head over to the edit component. And real quick, actually, I'm going to go to the TypeScript first. We had to update our, what our form builder looks like because we changed some of the blog post properties. So like the header and the subheader and then pretty much everything down here, we had to update these and add them to our form builder group. We also added an error message field. In our onSubmit function down here at the bottom, we had to, now that we're using the pretty URL, we're basically getting our post first and making sure that there's no other blog posts with that same pretty URL, since it does have to be unique. Um, and if there is one, then we're, we're setting the error message. Um, that, so that, that would pop up um, if there is a pretty URL that already exists. And then we're updating our post as usual, as we were before down here. 
And if we go over to the HTML, we have an error message at the top here. We have some new fields with our header, our subheader, our preview image source, and our preview URL. And then if we go a little further down, we have our, our editor HTML. So everything, I'm gonna close this real quick. All of this code in this editor HTML tag is our tiny MCE. There's a bunch of fields in here. Um, feel free to take a look at the code in this video, or of course we'll post the GitHub repo if you want to follow along, because this is kind of a lot of stuff here. We'll, we'll, we can kind of show you some of this stuff, but there's basically a bunch of plugins that you can use in the tiny MCE, and you can add new plugins or remove some of these plugins if you're not going to need them. Um, we added our code sample and some image, so we can select images, and same with our toolbar. This is the actual toolbar that's going to show up in the tiny MCE editor. And at the end here, we have an image and a code sample button, which we'll show off um, soon. And then our code sample, you can actually choose which languages that will be available to act for um, syntax highlighting. And if you go to the tiny MCE documentation, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to see which languages you can add and how to add them to this code sample languages field. And I think that's pretty much it, right, Elliot? Yep, sounds good. Awesome. So we actually let's let's go ahead and open this up in our browser. So if we go to localhost fifty two hundred, which we started over here, we add a new blog post. You can see here now. I'm just going to make this full screen that we have our editor here. We're gonna we have to do one more step, which is adding some code syntax highlighting. There's some additional steps in order to do that. So we will jump into the code for that right now. Okay, so we got Prism into our app now, Prism.js. Um, we didn't do this first, but the first thing you should probably do is add Prism.js. So you can run npm install Prism.js, or you can add Prism.js to your package.json and then run your npm install. After you have that, we can go to our angular.json file, and uh, we just have to add Prism.js to our scripts, same place we've added the tiny MCE. Uh, JavaScript file. After that, let's go to our styles.scss file. We just got to import a couple things, um, the Prism toolbar CSS, and um, this is a theme, Ocadia, Prism, o I don't know how to pronounce yeah, that, close but enough. it is a theme that we have and you will see later on. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is we'll look at is our view post component. We just got to do a couple things in here to get our code snippets highlighted. We have a bunch of imports that we have to bring in from the clipboard all the way down through these prism.js imports. And we also declare a prism variable and we'll use that prism variable a little further down here. Um, we're implementing after view checked. So this um, function will be called after um, the HTML has been brought up and like the view, our view, our component view is available. So in our ng after view checked function, we call prism.highlightall. And that's it really. We can run through a live, ex we'll take a look at this one real quick. Um, we have an image here and this was all done with our tiny MCE and then a code snippet that's highlighted. We'll run through a quick example real quick if you want to do that, Elliot. Yeah. All right, so we're going to dive into the live demo, and we're just going to write a post uh, about Post Malone. Uh, we're just going to put a header in here, all about Posty, 
subheader is going to be he is a cool guy. And the preview image source, I just grabbed an image off of Google. And the preview image source isn't hooked up on the home page yet, but we're just going to add it in here for now. Uh, our pretty URL will be Malone because all of our view pages start with post slash. So kind of a cool URL coincidence there. Uh, and then this is just going to be a quick bio. And we'll go ahead and add a nice picture. And we'll make it a little bit smaller. And there we go. We've got a very confused looking Post Malone and we're gonna go ahead and save it. And then go home and there it is. There's our all about posty post. So if we read it, you can see we've got a pretty URL at the top of Post Malone. And there's our header, our subheader and our tiny MCE editor text. So there you go. Today we implemented the tiny MCE HTML editor into our blog application. This will allow us to write blogs that look great with images and code snippets. We hope you learned a few things from this video and are now able to uh, integrate your own HTML editor into your blog application or any other web application that you're building. So make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Peace! Peace!